How's everyone doing today? Stream time. It is stream time. Um, as the title says, we're making karaage chicken. Uh, delicious, delicious Japanese fried chicken with a light rice or potato starch coating. Um, flavor comes from sake, soy sauce, and uh, a little bit of ginger and garlic. Um, yeah. Um, in terms of order of events, we are going to uh, prepare the marinade for our chicken. We are then going to cut up our chicken and place it in the marinade. And then while that marinates for 15 minutes or so, it doesn't need long. We're using some really strong flavors and it, uh, it, gets, uh, it, it gets in there really quickly. So while we are waiting for that to marinate for a bit, that's when we'll make our, our pickles. What I will say is the, the pickles will not be ready for you to eat with your food. Um, the, the pickles will be ready in about four hours. Um, and so the reason we're doing that partially is to fill time while our chicken marinates, because otherwise we've got half an hour, 15 minutes to half an hour of downtime. Um, but it's also just really good knowledge to have uh, on a way to do quick pickles at, at home because there's, um, there's a variety of, of ways um, to, to pickle things. And um, the, the Japanese have a bunch of different ways that, of, of categories of, of pickling things that fall under the sukumone or sukumono um, category of, of pickled things. And so there's, you know, the vinegar pickles, brined pickles, fermented pickles, and this, all we are doing is adding salt to them. But we will get to that down the line. In the meantime, let's get our little bit of prep work out of the way because there is not much prep work that needs to be done. Uh, I'm gonna get out. I'm just gonna get a little bored because I have a little bit of work to do. So I am going to be preparing this with sake. You can substitute mirin for the sake. Um, but because of the salt content in, in there, you're gonna want to let it down with a little bit of water and you're gonna use a little less. So if you're making as much as I am, which I'm using two, you can see here, I'm using some two very large chicken breasts for this. You can do thighs, traditionally it's thighs. I'm using chicken breasts because I'm trying to eat more lean meats. Um, so for that amount, you're gonna use about half a cup of soy sauce. And then if you're using sake, you're gonna do half a cup of sake. If you are using mirin, cut that in half, do a quarter cup of mirin, and then let that down with a quarter cup of water. So this is one of these dishes that I like to make frequently because of how easy uh, it is. What you're gonna do, I don't know if you guys have ever done the spoon trick for, uh, for peeling ginger. You can peel ginger with a peeler, but it's soft enough you can just take the edge of a spoon and scrape the peel down. We don't need to get all of it because it's just for the marinade. It's not really, it's not gonna get cooked up. I'm back with information about Japanese whiskey. Captain, thank you for uh, for, for doing the research on that. What, uh, what's the what's the deal? Is it is it Eli based as we thought? Or, uh, or are we both like way off base? Um, you got two options on what you're gonna do here. You can, uh, if you got a cheese grater, I would just grate it. Um, I'm gonna be using, I've got a, a specific ginger grater, but if you got a cheese grater, you can just grate it. The other thing you can do uh, is, is just mince it. I find that grating it is the easiest way and it'll get the most flavor in there, um, but mincing it is an option as, as well. If you are grating it, a regular cheese grater will work fine. Um, you know, if you've got a little fine grater like this one, and you can grate that on there. And you end up with uh, a nice ginger paste. Okay, so keep on grating or mincing. Mincing is fine. Mincing is totally an option. Uh, your ginger. And we are then going to add all of that ginger that we just grated or minced. Specify, mincing is an option. Uh, into our marinade for the chicken. 
that's done, we can set it aside and uh, get the ginger off our hands. Alright. Fresh ginger is the best. Isn't it great? I love fresh ginger. Um, I'm going to be starting a, a ginger bug soon for making fermented ginger beer. And I'll, uh, I'll run you guys through that when I get there. Because bas basically to make a ginger, uh, a, a good ginger bug, you basically take a, a, a knob of ginger, like a big, you know, root that's like the size of your hand. Well, here, I'll... I go through a lot of ginger. Uh, I, I go through a lot of ginger. So typically when I buy ginger, I buy it this big. And so you need something about this, maybe even a little more. I've broken a couple pieces off this for uh, for doing a good ginger bun. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's my ginger. I, I love ginger. Ginger is like my favorite thing because it's such an easy way to provide kind of a citrusy heat um, to whatever you're doing. Did not realize highballs are this refreshing. Aren't they delightful? It just, it's just light, you know, it's, it's a light enough flavor that you can drink a lot of them really fast. All right, we're gonna do the same situation with our, um, with our garlic. You can, if you've got a garlic press, use a garlic press. Um, you can leave the skin on and you can grate it down and, uh, and, and grate it right in there or peel it and mince it. We're going to, since we've got the grater here, we are going to uh, grate it. We'll do it over here because the peel kind of falls apart. Get that little bit of peel. And a whole mound of grated garlic. Uh, and again, the other option, you can mince it. Mincing it is totally acceptable and easy, but I guess we're, we're trying to make this process as easy as possible. I'm trying to tell you guys how easy this is to do, and so we're, we're, we're gonna do it easy. Straighten that way down. And we're going to then zhuzh that garlic into our bowl, and then we are gonna go wash our hands, because otherwise we're gonna smell like garlic. All right, we're gonna grab whatever cutting board you prefer to use for meat. And we're going to add our chicken, and then we can use that same little raw chicken plate um, over here for the time being. Um, so if you're working with thighs, you're gonna to wanna to do a little bit of trimming on them. Um, and uh, same same with, uh, with breasts, really. You wanna clean up just a little bit of the uh, and we don't want any tendons, we don't want any fat in there. You know, we're cutting them really into, into little nugget sizes. Not too thin, but like bite size. Bite size. Right. Alright, throw your chicken in your marinade. Wash your hands again. Always wash your hands after handling chicken. And then realize that you probably should have tossed the chicken before you wash your hands. So we're just going to give that a little, a little toss. Make sure all the pieces are covered um, and mostly submerged. And then cover it with plastic wrap. I'm not going to because my plastic wrap I, is hidden by my cart that I have my computer and stuff on. And uh, we are going to throw that in the fridge and let it marinate until we're ready for it. You might want to give it a stir after a couple minutes. What's the name of the plant in the background? Okay, uh, that is uh, basil the basil. That is Boris the bamboo. Uh, right there is uh, Jimbo the Venus flytrap. And I don't think we named the turtle, but there's a turtle um, that's got some flowers in it, little succulent flowers. I don't, I don't think we ever named him. Let's check on our chicken. Give that a little, a little stir. Make sure all the pieces get uh, get coated. You can tell that the soy is getting into the uh, into the chicken because if you drain it off a bit, 
it still has that kind of brown soy-y color. So the next step is to get out a plate. It's something that you're like a, a little a pie tin or a, a baking sheet or something. We'll keep letting that sit and soak for a few more minutes. What we're going to do is load up our potato starch on here. So we're not really doing like a, a, a panne or anything. We are just going to dust it in potato starch. It does not need much more than potato starch. At this point, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about our oil. Now I'm frying in a Dutch oven because I like frying in a Dutch oven. Um, that's my go-to. If you've got a, a high-walled pan or a little pot, that uh, that is is good. You want about a eh, you want a, the oil to be a little bit deeper than the size of your your chicken. Um, so you want like an inch inch and a half of oil. You know, like that really depends on the size of your pot, how much you're going to need. pieces of your chicken in your spider or just lower them in gently yourself and then immediately give them a little jostle to uh, separate them because they will stick to each other if you let them. The great thing about these is it's very hard to overcook these because of the marinade this, and you're locking the marinade in there and uh, because it's been it been marinated, um, it'll stay pretty juicy for uh, for a while, even if you bring it well above temperature. So you really don't need to worry about this getting too dry. Focus more on getting your chicken fully cooked up to temperature. I'm gonna grab again one of our bigger pieces in here. Poke it right in the middle. Not ready. I'm just gonna cook them a bit by bit and uh, wait till they're done. I have a temp alert on this tomorrow. It'll be when it's ready. Right on. Uh, there's plenty of successful artists that didn't go to art school and the pressure whoops you graduate high school go to college and adult I wonder if I'm doing the right thing if I don't go to school or not my recommendation then would be to possibly take a gap year yeah and and it really depends on what you want to do I mean you know uh, I don't think enough places accept the gap year uh, you've taken a gap year okay right on right on right on And then we check our oil. So this is gonna hiss and pop at you a lot. And this is part of the chicken juice, part of the oil. Nice, let's switch over. 
couple of mine to Laura's plate. That didn't take you long. Touch the ones that just came out of the fryer. I'm giving you a plate. <laughs> and a piece here, a little bit of our mayo. If you'd like to make a gochujang mayo dipping sauce for yourself, simply combine three parts mayonnaise or Japanese Kewpie mayonnaise with one part gochujang Korean chili paste. Mm. So, it crunches so hard. Light crispy shell. You can taste the sake and the soy, garlic and ginger, all the way. Take pictures? Nah, not this time. So, a little bit of then the pickle, if you've got pickle, great. Lemon juice will do the same thing, kind of cuts through the uh, richness of the chicken. Then, same thing where it's like, you can kind of cut through it again with the spicy mayo, or a little bit of lemon juice on there. Ooh. That was Hey there, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you come follow me on Twitch and you can watch all the cooking streams live. If you have a minute, check out badgerfood.club where you can find recipes, articles, and more. 